I want to talk about the game of NIM. This is a follow-up video for the Albuquerque Math Teachers Circle. And we already played NIM, we know the rules, um, but I'll just go over the rules real quick as a review. Uh, you start out with piles of matchsticks, and those are just going to be indicated by these vertical lines. And there's can be any number of piles, and in each pile there can be any number of sticks. And at play, players take turns, and on each turn, a player just takes any number of sticks from exactly one pile. You can't take sticks from more than one pile. You have to take at least one stick, uh, and you can take all sticks from a pile if you want. And that's it. Uh, the player who has makes the last move wins. That's not always the way to play NIM, but that's the way we're playing NIM. Another way to say it is the if you don't have a legal move, you lose. Um, if you are presented with an empty board, and so you cannot possibly make a move, then you lose. So it's the last person to win. Uh, the last person to move who's the winner. So here's two different possible setups. Maybe the game starts with this game board. Maybe the game starts with this game board. And I'm going to start by just showing game B and analyzing that one first. Um, so another way to say it is here's what player one is presented with. That's, what they, that's the board they need to play with. And so I'm going to copy that down here. And so maybe they take... Um, all of, let me take, take all but one of these. And now that is what player two has to play with. Okay, so what's player two gonna be gonna do? Maybe, not playing in any particularly interesting way, maybe they would take all three of these guys. And so now that's what player one is presented with as a game board. Okay, so What's player one going to do? Maybe player one would take all but one of those and leave that for player two to play with. Well, player two is in a very good situation here. See if you can see it. You can pause the video if you want. Player two can take both of these guys and leave that for player one to play with. That is not a good situation for player one because there's only one kind of one move that player one can make and that is to leave player two exactly one stick. And you never want to leave one single pile because clearly that's going to be um, the last move. And here's what one is presented with, the empty board, and that's a loss for number one. So player two, in that case, one. Okay. So one thing I want to mention, I don't think I emphasized um, in the presentation, is one thing about NIM is because any initial board is a legal opening board, unlike chess, where there's only one way to start the game. Um, this, for example, with player one to move, one, one pile of one, one pile of three, one pile of two, that's just a game of NIM that happens to have that initial configuration for the board. And so that's one this nice thing that about NIM is that if you understand how to play any initial position, when that you also understand how to play any any intermediate point in the game because this is that you could say oh hey I've seen this game before maybe I played one three two and I have a winning strategy for one three two and here I am at that position it's like I'm playing that game again and so in fact the mathematical analysis of games has um, it takes much advantage of that kind of thing and NIM is a particularly easy example of it the other thing to note here is when we got down to piles of one stick this is something we observed uh, in the presentation, in the meeting of the circle, which is when it's piles of just one stick, then you don't want to be left with an even number because you're going to start taking turns, taking one stick at a time, and you're going to lose because it's the, it's the person who has an odd number who's going to take that last, uh, that last stick. So even an odd was an important thing, and that's going to come in in a big way in a, in a minute. Okay. In fact, the, the whole rest of the time, even when I give you the master strategy, so, let me show you a different way, though, um, that player one could have won. And this is going to be the easy, the easy to remember strategy, which we talked about in the session. And then I'm going to do another video, it probably will require another video, to talk about the, the more complicated strategy. It's still not super complicated, but it's, um, it's pretty cool. So, um, we want to take advantage of this kind of thing that we saw. The reason player one lost here is that they, he ended up with an, uh, an even number of, of piles of one stick. It's not true that an even number of piles of 
some arbitrary number of sticks is a guaranteed loss. Here, player one had, or player two had four piles. It's an even number, but it was definitely not a guaranteed loss. In fact, player two won. But what we discovered was that a better way to think about this is player one took one of these sticks, and then player two mirrored that, was able to exactly mirror that move. Because what's really special about this configuration is not just that it's two single piles, it's that it's symmetrical. That there's two, you can break it into two parts that exactly mirror each other. So can player one here leave player two with a board that's completely symmetrical? Yes, if player one takes exactly three of these sticks. Let me emphasize that by putting in maybe like a little dash here, or just a dash, just one dash, I guess. Okay, and so there's one half of the board, there's another half of the board, and player two now has to play in one or the other of the halves. And the great thing is that now player one can just mirror everything player two does. So let's see how that works. Maybe player two is going to take uh, all three of these, try to be really aggressive, but then player one, that's what player, that's the, the board that player one has to play with, that's what the one is indicating. But then player one just says, okay, I can do that because it's symmetrical. Okay, well, let's see, player two, then maybe just, just plays over here on this one, this pile, just takes one of those, trying to stave off the inevitable because you never want to leave your opponent just one pile. Um, that's, that's always not a good, that's never a good thing to do. But player one can go ahead and mirror that on the other side. And that's, of course, a classic bad situation for player two. Oop, that's player two left with that. Classic bad situation for player two to be left with. Player two has to take that one, one of the sticks, and player one gets to play the last move. And we'll just close it out by saying two has nothing. Okay. So one thing that's interesting here is that the simplest possible symmetric position is the empty position, the one where you've lost. And so that's uh, uh, going to be a hint as to how we can make this into a master strategy. That one thing that's special about symmetric positions is that the bad, the empty position, the losing position, is one of those guys. And so if you've, you're here in player two, has been put into the situation, this is a very special, specific uh, board, 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two. but what's really important about it is it's in this really bad set of positions bad set of ga NIM games, which are symmetrical. And the ultimate bad NIM game is the very, very symmetrical one, which has no sticks at all. And so what we're going to discover is that that's one of the things that's really making this strategy work in a general sense. The fact that it's, um, the fact that you can mirror is a really easy way to exploit the strategy, but we'll see that there's, you don't have to do it that way. So that's the, the easy strategy if you want it. Um, you know, I'm giving a lot away, but I promised I would give stuff away in this video. Um, easy strategy. If you can, leave your opponent with a symmetrical board, or a position, whatever you want to call it, configuration, and then mirror. And that really, that will beat, um, that will be just about everybody who doesn't know that strategy, or the, or the better strategy for that matter. Um, because you, you, as long as the game starts with a decent number of sticks, after one or two moves, you can usually manage to leave the other player in a symmetrical uh, board, and then they're toast, and it, you just mirror what they do. So, but what if you can't do that? What if you can't uh, immediately leave your opponent with a symmetrical board? And especially, what if your opponent knows that strategy, that simple strategy, and is going to try to play it against you? So, for example, game A here, 3, 5, and 4. Well, if you take, um, those are three different numbers, and so there's three piles, first of all. You can't make that into an even number of piles without taking one of the piles away completely, and you can't take three different numbers, erase one of the numbers, and have, magically, have those two numbers that are left be the same. So, this is a configuration that the first player cannot immediately make it symmetrical. Like game B was very easy for game for player one to win uh, if they know the symmetrical strategy because they 
just do what we did in that second play, which is leave a symmetrical position in, on the first move. So we need to be able to figure out how to play game A in a in a winning way. So before I say that, I want to just uh, talk a little bit more about the symmetrical strategy and say a little, a few more general things about what was happening here and why it worked. Okay, so I want to go down here and let's just let me list features of the symmetrical strategy. This one that's good, but is not a guaranteed winner because you can't always just put somebody in that symmetrical position. So one of the feature, really simple feature, uh, well, the, probably the main feature is that there are good positions and bad positions. And the good ones, well, the bad positions, that equals symmetrical. It's a position you don't want to have to play. So some bad is something, you want to leave your opponent a bad position, and you don't want to be forced to play from a bad position. So we saw that being forced to play from a symmetrical strategy, a uh, symmetrical position is bad if your opponent knows the symmetrical strategy. Okay, so positions group into two categories, the bad ones, the symmetrical, and the good ones. In this version, that's just basically everything else. Although, we could put a question mark on that because it's not a not absolutely clear there might be better or worse positions above the, uh, in terms of the non-symmetrical ones for example game a and game b up here we know the game b is a great position to start because you can easily convert it to symmetrical game a not so much so that's where we're going to have to do a little more work okay um, another feature is that the empty position is bad that's, of course, always going to be true, because it's a loser. It's an automatic loser. So it's definitely bad, but the other reason that it fits with this pattern is that it's symmetrical. So we've got this group of, this set of bad positions, and if you're going to define a set of bad positions, if you're going to say some are worse than others, you better have the empty position being one of the bad ones. Okay. And so what, we're gonna, what I'm leading up to here is we're going to redefine what it means to be a good and bad position. And we're actually going to find more bad positions. That's going to be really good if we're a good if we know these these rules because it's going to give us easier opportunities to 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 play a move to force the other player to be in a bad position. Okay. So, let's just uh go back and and do some labeling here. Um, I'm just going to label the bad ones because the good ones it's a little bit inconclusive still what we should call good and bad. But this is bad I'll I'll take out the quotes actually. We know it's kind of a loose term. Okay. These are all bad positions to be in, and of course that's the horrible position to be in. So what's going on here? The symmetry is really cool, but let's look look a little deeper. What's happening is that there's this bad position that that player 1 is forced on player 2. And then it alternates. Player 2 is always forced break the symmetry to go out of that the that bad class of positions which seems like a good thing right but that that's not good because you're leaving the other player a better position than you had you don't want to pl to play into a good position you want uh, cuz that's cuz it's the other player's turn so there's these bad positions and player 2 in the in the symmetrical case no matter what they do they're going to break that symmetry They've got 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two here. They've got to do something. They can only do something to one pile, and that's going to break the symmetry. And so that's one of the things that's happening here, is that player 2, if you're forced with a, to, if you're left with a bad position to play from, you've got to actually go out of the bad class, and you've got to improve it. Oh, darn, I'm improving it for my opponent. And then player 1 is always able to put it back in the bad class, the bad set of positions. And so let me just summarize that real quick before it, it terminates on me. Okay, so um, playing from bad must leave the bad set of positions. And playing from good mm, must, well, that's the question mark, create, or can always be, be left, uh, can always create bad 
or can it? And that's where we're going to have to have another video.